RC Hobby is still with a lot of devices that output RF power. And the amount of RF power that the devices output is super important. If your video transmitter doesn't output 800 milliwatts like it said it would, well, number one, you paid for something and you didn't get it. But number two, you're not going to get as much range if your video transmitter doesn't output as much power as it could. And the same is true for your RC control module. Express LRS, Crossfire, Ghost, Tracer, FreeSky, it doesn't matter. The more output power that that module outputs, the more range you're going to get. And that's why it's a shame that devices that measure RF power usually are designed for use in a lab. They're highly calibrated. They're super expensive and they're just out of reach for your average RC hobbyist. But not the device that we're gonna look at today. This is the Immersion RC RF power meter. It costs about a hundred bucks, which is not cheap until you look at how much other RF power meters cost. And then you realize this is a really, really inexpensive RF power meter. It's not as precise as a piece of lab grade equipment, but it is more than precise enough to answer the kind of questions that RC hobbyists have about their equipment. And what we're gonna do today is we're gonna go through it and I'm gonna show you how to use it correctly. I'm Joshua Bardwell, you're gonna learn something today. First thing we're going to do is measure the output power of this analog video transmitter. This is probably one of the most common things that people do with their power meters. Number one, some video transmitters are more powerful on some channels than others. And if you could have your choice of channels, then you would want to choose a channel that you have more output power on. Number two, People want to know if the output power of their video transmitter is like honest, if they're actually getting the output power that they're supposed to be getting. I'm going to say more about that later in the video because you don't want to jump to the incorrect conclusion and blame somebody for something they didn't do. And number three, at races, for example, race directors will often use this device to test and see if uh, people's video transmitter is too powerful and if they're causing interference. So these are all reasons we might want to answer this question. And the first thing I need to do is hook the power meter up to my video transmitter. Now, uh, the RF power meter comes with several accessories. It comes with a little antenna like this and it comes with some cables both an MMCX and a UFL cable, as well as an SMA connector. In our case, we are gonna be using the MMCX connector because that's what this video transmitter comes with. And the other thing that we are gonna to wanna to do is if the video transmitter or any device that we're hooking the power meter to, if it outputs more than one watt, then we cannot hook it directly to the power meter because the power meter's maximum rated power, you can see it's printed right here, plus 30 dBm max, that's one watt. And if you subject the power meter to more than one watt, then it can be damaged. And actually, I just read the manual before I made this video to make sure there was nothing I was missing. It turns out if you subject it to more than 500 milliwatts for more than 30 seconds, it can be damaged. So we don't wanna to put too much power into the power meter. Now this Rush Tank Solo is capable of outputting, I think it's 1.6 watts. So we're gonna need to take a step to deal with that. And the step that we're gonna take is to get one of these. This is a 6 dB attenuator. Uh, I'm gonna put a link to all of this stuff down in the video description if you wanna pick it up. Uh, what the attenuator is gonna do is it is going to make the signal weaker. It's gonna make it uh, one fourth of its incoming value, which means that instead of one watt coming in, we'll only get 250 milliwatts. What that means is that with a 6 dB attenuator, we can connect the power meter to up to a four watt transmitter and uh, be okay. Now, some people might go and buy higher value attenuators. 10 dB, 20 dB, 30 dB, as if like if 6 dB is good, then more is better. And that's actually not true. You want the minimum value attenuator that still keeps the power level at a safe value. So my recommendation is 6 dB because like a, a 3 dB attenuator will let you get up to two watts of input power, but some devices in FPV get close to two watts. So maybe if we just get a 6 dB attenuator, keep it under four watts, we'll be good to go. So I've connected the attenuator. I'm gonna wanna make sure that all of the connections are secure. You can even get a little wrench and very gently snug them down, but you can totally damage them if you crank it. It's soft brass, so be very gentle if you do that. But just very gently, we'll make sure that all the connections are, are nice and snug, and we will connect that up to our video transmitter. 
Next, I'm going to turn the power meter on, and there are a couple of menu options I'm going to want you to set uh, before we actually power up the video transmitter and measure its output power. To get into the menu, I'm going to click this joystick one time. I can go up and down to select which option I want to adjust. I click and you'll see that, uh, oh, isn't that interesting? On some of them, clicking changes the value, and on others, clicking makes it go solid, and up and down changes the value. That's interesting, it's a little inconsistent, but okay. Uh, I can click again to go back out and move through the menu again. And the first thing that we need to change is this attenuation value. Anytime we are using uh, an attenuator, we need to put that attenuation value into the menu. So I'm going to click there and I'm going to put in 6 dB of attenuation to match the value of my attenuator. And what that does is the, uh, the meter then adds 6 dB back into the power me measurements, canceling out the effect of the meter so you get accurate readings. The mode can either be set to average or peak. When working with an analog video transmitter that sends a continuous signal, use average. When working with a digital transmitter, like a Crossfire or an Express LRS device, use peak. So we're going to set that to average. And when I do that, hopefully I will start to see some power measurements here on the power meter. But those power measurements are not accurate yet. The power meter is calibrated at Immersion RC using a very expensive RF meter, and it has different calibration values depending on what frequency it's reading. So in order to get an accurate reading, you need to tell it what frequency or channel your video transmitter is on. And I'm seeing right here that I'm getting five blue blinks and one red blink. I believe that means we're on channel race band one. As far as the output power goes, I'm not sure, but let's go into the power meters menu and we're going to change the megahertz. And what we need to do is we need to pick the frequency that is closest to the channel that we're on. So race band one is 5658 megahertz. And so we're just going to go all the way down here to 5650 is pretty close. Uh, and we will back out again. And we should see now that we are getting, oh, we're getting one watt or 30 dBm. I want to show you what happens when I put my hand near the attenuator. Uh, look at the output power here and notice that when I touch the attenuator, the output power actually goes up. That effect is why you don't want to use a higher value attenuator than you need to. Or if you're under one watt, then don't use an attenuator at all. Um, the higher the value of the attenuator that you use, the more pronounced that effect will be. Right now, the number that we're reading is actually just a little bit low. And is it right when I touch it? I don't know. We've got a little bit of inaccuracy being introduced by the attenuator, and that's just something we have to live with. But use the lowest value attenuator that keeps it under one watt going into the meter, and you'll get the most accurate numbers that you can. Here's another great use for the RF power meter. Uh, if I suspect that I have a bad cable, I can plug that cable in, like you see here, and I can measure the output power going into the meter. I can then power down, swap in another cable, and see if the reading changes. Bear in mind that the meter is going to, uh, that the VTX is going to heat up and its output power may change. So for the most accurate readings, you may want to get like a little fan and blow it on it to keep the uh, temperature and the output power stable. Another thing I can do is I can just wiggle the connector. <gasps> wow, that's hot. That's really hot. Maybe don't hold it with your hand while you wiggle it. <laughs> it's really hot. <laughs> Dumbass. <laughs> uh, you can wiggle the connector <laughs> using a, a tool. And you can see, oh, 150 milliwatts. Oh, it's totally overheating, isn't it? Ah! We can wiggle the connector and see if the power level drops. We can wiggle the cable. You know, we can see if there's any loose connectors or anything. This is a good way to just sort of sanity check your RF equipment. For the next demonstration, I'm going to connect this antenna to the RF power meter. The, it comes with this antenna. And uh, this is a much less accurate way of measuring RF power. Not that the meter itself becomes less accurate when you connect an antenna to it, but a signal traveling through a wire is going to have a much more consistent power level than a signal moving through the air. I am going to need to go into the menu and take out that attenuation value since I'm no longer using the attenuator. I believe I megahertz should be 5650, race band one. 
And I want you to see that when I'm using this antenna, the, the power that I measure depends heavily on the distance of the antenna from the other antenna and on its orientation. So if I turn it this way, the power that I measure goes way down versus if I turn it this way. And also the position in space can also have a big difference on the output power. So then what the frick is this even good for? If I'm on the power meter's main screen and I push the joystick to the right, I can cycle through several other screens. And the one I'm looking for here is, uh, they call it Scully mode. It's named after Joe Scully, the multi-GP race director and announcer. What you do is you put the antenna next to a reference power level. So let's say that this is my quadcopter and I know it's calibrated to exactly 25 milliwatts. You put it there and you click up on the joystick and you'll see it says zero define. Then this bar represents that power level and you can roughly check other quadcopters quickly to see that they're at approximately the same power level. So if I had a good VTX that I knew was outputting 25 milliwatts, I would hold this, let's say I just hold it one knuckles length from the antenna, right? And then I define the zero. So here we go. One knuckle's length. I'm going to get my hand out of the way because that can affect the measurement. And I'm going to click up. The zero is defined. Now, as people are checking their quadcopters in for the race, I'm going to have them power up and I'm going to do the same thing. And I'm going to see that it is at about the same power level. And I'll know as everybody is at roughly 25 milliwatts. There's one more tip that I want to give you and it relates to maintaining the longevity of this device. So SMA connectors, like the one that you see here, have a limited number of mating cycles. Eventually they wear out and uh, then you'll start to get inaccurate readings. What I recommend you do is you get, in fact, I think they ship with this, one of these SMA to SMA connectors. And uh, the point of this is just so that when you're screwing things onto your uh, power meter, you're wearing out this connector. Just leave this guy on there as much as possible. Screw into this, and then if you start to get inaccurate power readings, you just replace this one instead of having to replace your whole power meter. And there's one more thing that I promised to do at the beginning of this video that I haven't done yet, and that is tell you about how the accuracy of this meter relates to accusing video transmitter manufacturers of not giving you the output power that they say they will. And I'm going to do that just as soon as I tell you about my Patreon. Patreon is a website where you can subscribe to me for as little as $2 a month or more if you feel like I've earned it. The amount you subscribe at is totally up to you. Just think about how much value you get out of my content, education, entertainment, helping you make the right buying decisions. What's that worth to you? And then subscribe at that level. Patrons get access to my Discord server, which is full of friendly, helpful people who want to talk about FPV. There is a troubleshooting forum. There is a buy, sell, trade forum. It's just a really, really great place to hang out and talk FPV. Mostly though, I hope that you'll join up to my Patreon because you have been watching my videos for so long that finally you're just like, okay, it's time for me to give something back. If that day has come, then uh, there's a link in the video description where you can sign up. And if that's not that day for you yet, that's fine. I'm going to keep making the content. You're going to keep watching the content. Maybe that day will come. When you use the RF power meter to answer questions like which channel of my video transmitter is outputting the most power, or if I switch my VTX table from 25 milliwatts to 500 milliwatts, does the output power on my video transmitter even change or is it just not having any effect at all? Those are wonderful questions for the power meter to help you answer. When you start asking questions like, is this 800 milliwatt video transmitter actually outputting 800 milliwatts, things get a little more dicey. Because first of all, this is a amazingly accurate piece of equipment for what it is, but it is not a lab grade calibrated piece of equipment. And you and I are not probably trained and how to measure RF power. There are a lot of ways that you can set up one of these little experiments with the connectors, with the wires, these freaking cheap UFL cables, your SMA connectors can be loose. You could have something nearby to the connectors that is affecting the readings. There are all kinds of ways that these could get 
out of whack. And so if you take a measurement of a video transmitter with this, and the video transmitter is supposed to be outputting one watt, and this says it's only outputting 800 milliwatts or 650 milliwatts, don't immediately jump to the conclusion that the video transmitter manufacturer is lying and then get angry and take to the internet and hold this, shake this in their face and say, oh, I know you're lying. Oh, it told me so. Take it with a grain of salt. Do some more testing to figure out if you've got some other source of inaccuracy or just use this as a kind of a basic sanity check, but recognize that it may not be the most accurate tool in the world. However, it is pretty freaking accurate. And I know because I had a friend compare this to a multi-thousands of dollars piece of RF equipment. And if you want to know how accurate it was and the specific band in which it was least accurate, I'll put a card on screen and you can check it out. Or there's a link in the video description if for some reason you can't see the card. See you there.